Hey there, welcome to another video with me, Chris, from chrisamericos.com, where we help you level up and show the world the best version of yourself. And in today's video, we're going to talk about five reasons why it's easier for children to learn English or any other language than it is for adults. Why is it easier for a child to learn English or another language than it is for an adult to learn that language? In this video, we look at five different reasons why that's true. But first, subscribe to this channel because you don't wanna miss other useful videos like this. Before we really get into the five reasons why it's easier for children, I have to ask you this question. Is it really easier for children? A lot of people agree that it is easier for children, but this requires us to ask a deeper question. What does it mean that it's easier? Are we talking about learning something faster or are we talking about learning something better? Because really there are advantages and disadvantages to learning a language as a child and learning a language as an adult. There are some aspects of language learning that adults can do much faster and better than children. And there are others that children do much better and faster. Pronunciation is usually something that children are much stronger at. But because children can't understand abstract ideas, adults can learn the language much deeper and can learn rules that they can apply to language overall. So as we talk about the five reasons why it's easier for children, I want you to think about what your opinion on this topic is and let me know in the comments below this video. The first reason that it's easier for children to learn languages is something called passive exposure. Passive exposure is when you just do what you always do. You just go about your life, you just live, and you come into contact with some different things, right? Like when you're walking down the street, you breathe in air, and there might be different things in the air. There might be particles or bacteria or pollution, and you breathe this and you don't even think about it, right? You just do that passively because you're not focused on it and you don't even understand that it's happening, really. That's what happens with children and language. They just live their life and go about their daily activities. You know, they need to get food, they need to take care of some basic needs, and while they're doing those things, language is just happening all around them. And that's a really big difference from how adults experience language, because children lack awareness of what they are learning. It's just a natural thing that's happening around them. It's just an event. It's just something that happens that they don't differentiate from everyday life. They don't say, okay, words are different from breathing or walking or eating. Adults see language differently. They see that this word means something and makes me feel a certain way. I need to speak correctly or incorrectly. There are some rules that we should follow and there are some associations that we have with different types of language or using different words or different groups of people who use types of words. So there's a lot of stuff happening in our minds when we talk about language. And then when an adult goes to learn another language, they really focus on what the rules are, what the sounds are, every little piece of the language, and they analyze it, it's something that's unnatural. They have to interpret and understand it. They put a lot of effort and attention into this. I mean, as an adult, you have to work, you have a family, you have things that you have to do, you have a lot of responsibilities. So other than just experiencing a language and other than just living your life and doing the day-to-day -day things like walking and eating, you have responsibilities, you have other people who you need to help or you need to communicate with. There are other things that you've already set up in your life that are a standard for you. So it's not just an open book and you can just decide what to do anytime that you want. There's a lot of restrictions and limitations. We live inside of our little box that we've created for ourselves. But for children, it's different. They're just here going with the flow. Other people make some rules and restrictions around them. More or less, they're just moving around, living their life, doing what they want in the moment. That means that they have a lack of responsibility and that actually helps them learn languages much more easily. The second reason that it's easier for children to learn languages than for adults is because children have lower inhibitions. An inhibition is something that holds you back or stops you from doing something. If you've ever had too many alcoholic drinks, then you know that your inhibitions can be lowered and you can do actions or say things that you normally would not say. 
that's because we hold a lot of actions and feelings and thoughts and words back when we are adults because we want to do things that are appropriate and correct for different situations. Children tend to hold less things back, and that's really good. They're less afraid of making mistakes. Children will try to use linguistic concepts that they've just learned. They don't care if they don't completely understand it. They just try to put it into the sentence because they heard it, they picked it up, and now they're using it and they're not so afraid that someone's going to criticize them. As an adult, we worry more about that because we know that there are standard rules that we need to follow, and when we don't follow them, there can be bad consequences. We have the responsibility to follow societal norms, to do normal things that normal people do. As a child, you're not limited to that. People can see you do something that's different, against the rules, a little bit strange or unusual, and they say, oh, they're just a child. But why do children have lower inhibitions? We already said that they're less embarrassed or worried about making mistakes, and that's due to being less self-conscious. If someone is self-conscious, it means that they're worried about how they look or how they sound or how they appear to other people. They're worried about being judged by others. Children are much less self-conscious than adults in general. And this concept of the self is really, really important in language learning. Self is your identity. It's who you believe you are. And it influences how you act and how you speak. And this is the second reason why children have less inhibitions and that helps them learn languages more easily. Children have a less developed self-concept. They haven't had so many years of experience to say all of those things that happened are who I am. As an adult, we tend to look back at our personal experiences and attach them to ourselves and say, the place that I was born, the family I was raised in, the events that I experienced, that all of those things are part of who I am, separate from my environment and separate from everyone else around me. That's our self-concept. That's who we believe we are. And after you've developed this self-concept, it's very difficult for you to do and say things that go against who you believe you are. People want to be consistent with who they believe themselves to be. Around the same time that a child starts to develop language, they also start to develop their concept of self. One of the first things they learn is their name and the names of the people around them. And then we start to use language to label different things and we teach the child what this object is called and what this thing is called and who that person is. And really what that does is it gives them words to describe who they are and how that is different from who other people are and what other things are. But the self-concept of a child has much less experience behind it, and so it's still open to interpretation. There are a lot of things that are still unknown, and there are a lot of things in the world that can be met for the first time. And when those first experiences happen, they can be interpreted by the child and then attached to the self after they're interpreted, and language helps the child do that. This is why people say that children are like sponges and that they absorb knowledge and information. But that's not always a good thing. If the child is around people who have bad behavior or use bad language, then the child might pick up on that, absorb that, and then start to use that too. Their self-concept hasn't been fully constructed yet. And that brings us to reason number three why it's easier for children to learn languages than it is for adults, and that's meaning association. When a child learns something new, there's really nothing between the word and the meaning of the word. When we're adults, there's more to it than that. Adults use abstract constructs. If you're learning English, then you may have heard some terms like present perfect, present simple. This is a way that you can take one concept, learn what that concept is, and then apply it to many, many, many different verbs in English. A child can't do that. Their abstract mind isn't developed enough for that, and they just won't understand what that really means. If you try to explain present perfect to a three-year-old, good luck. Instead, a child will quickly pick up on the meaning of something by how it's used in sentences and in speech. This is very similar to what adults call immersion. When you go to another country, and no one around you speaks your language, and you're forced to just observe. When I start doing this, sometimes it gives me a headache. 
I've done this a few different times with different languages in different countries. Usually what's happening as an adult is inside of your mind, you have your self-talk and you're talking to yourself in your language, in your first language or whichever language you use to interpret this situation because you don't have enough words or experience with the local language for you to interpret what's happening in that language. But everything is coming at you in that new language and you're trying to make sense of it. So what do you do? You apply the previous meanings that you've already created in your mind to this new situation and it stops you from being completely open to interpreting the new information that's coming in. So that might sound really complicated, but basically the things that you've already learned are blocking you from learning new things. But using those abstract constructs that you've already developed can be good or bad. It's bad because those abstract constructs can block you from just experiencing the language and culture and people around you. To say it another way, you might be in your head too much. You might just be thinking about it too much instead of just doing it. But on the other hand, these abstract constructs give adults a big advantage. I mean, you can learn one abstract construct and then you can apply it to many, many, many different words. That way you don't have to learn every individual situation. You can take one abstract construct, apply it to many situations, and you can use it again and again and again and you only had to learn it once. That gives you a big advantage. Next, let's talk about reason number four why it's easier for children to learn English or any other language than it is for adults to do the same. Another way to think about this is that explicit memory is in your conscious mind. You try to remember things. You try to create these memories. This is like when you're studying for an exam and you have a big list of words with their translations or you have grammar rules and you're trying to remember them so that you can get all of the questions right on the test, right? So this is explicit memory. You know you're doing this. You know you're trying to remember something and research shows that unfortunately it's not very effective. Usually things that we learn this way, we remember for a very short time, it's difficult to recall them and we forget them very quickly too. But implicit memory is in our unconscious mind. We don't even know that it's happening. So every day you're just going about your life, things are happening and yeah, you remember that some things happened, but you didn't try to remember it. It just happened around you and it was significant for you or it was interesting for you and it made an impression on you. And now it's in your mind and you remember it. And these types of memories last much longer and they're much easier to recall. When adults learn languages, they use a lot of explicit memory techniques, but children use their implicit memory. That doesn't mean that as an adult, you can't use implicit memory too. It's just that standard language learning techniques tend to focus on explicit memory. But here's an example of how adults use their implicit memory to remember things. I'm sure you've been in your car or in a shop or at a party and a song started playing. And maybe you didn't even notice or think about the fact that a song started, but something in the song is very catchy. It's very easy to remember. And you might not be focused on that song. You might just be driving or doing another activity. Somewhere in the background, the music and the words stick in your mind. You might start to hum the song like or you might start to repeat the words and you might not even think about it. You might just do it almost automatically. This is your implicit memory at work. This is your unconscious mind remembering something and then you repeating it. And that's why a really good language learning technique is to listen to someone speaking the language, listen to a podcast, listen to videos that are playing in the background, listen to some kind of audio or song and do another activity at the same time. This way you're passively taking in the language and all of the sounds of the language and you're doing another activity. You're allowing your implicit memory and your unconscious mind to pick up on these things. My favorite times to do this are when I'm driving in the car or when I'm taking a shower. And the fifth reason why it's easier for children to learn languages than it is for adults is because of neural plasticity. 
You're probably thinking, what did he just say? I understand, because this is very technical. Scientists and psychologists have been studying this for a long time, and they understand how developing new behaviors works inside of our brains. And we don't always think of speaking a language as a behavior, but it really is. It's another type of action that we take. It's part of our overall behavior. So I'll try to explain this in a very, very simple way for you. Inside of our brains, we have cells. We have little, little things that are called neurons, and they have some electricity in them. They send electricity to other neurons. There are signals inside of this electricity that one neuron sends to the next neuron. But in your brain, you have millions and millions of these neurons that are constantly sending these signals using electricity. They create a road or a neural pathway. And there are chemicals inside of our brains and inside of these neurons that help to send these signals better and faster. Neurons can send signals to other neurons using neurotransmitters. This creates a neural pathway, or that road that we were talking about earlier. You see, in children, these neural pathways haven't really been developed yet. There haven't been many signals sent across these pathways. It's like when somebody builds a new road. Not many cars have traveled on this road. But as adults, we have very developed neural pathways. We've sent signals on these pathways so many times. This is both good and bad. It's good because when you've sent a lot of these signals on the same pathway, it becomes easier for them to be sent so you can do things faster. Your brain already knows how it works and it can do it almost automatically. This is why people say practice makes perfect. It's true on a neurological level. But in children's brains, these neuropathways are much less developed because there haven't been so many signals sent. They're very open to new signals. This openness and being able to pick up new signals and create new neural pathways is called neuroplasticity. It means that their brains are more flexible. And this is just a biological fact. Adults can't go back and remove all of the neural pathways that they've already developed. So when a child hears someone say a new sound, their brain is very open to developing a special pathway for that signal. But when an adult hears that new sound, they might try to classify it as a different sound that they already know. They might say, oh, I have a pathway that's similar to that. I'm going to use that same pathway. If you've ever tried to learn another language that has sounds that are different from your first language, you probably know what I'm talking about. At first, you can't even hear the difference and you think that it's the same sound as something that you already know. But the more you hear it and the more you practice it, you're able to pick up on that nuance that tells you that it's different from the things that you already know. It's a special sound that you need to learn. And then you have the next big task, producing that sound, trying to say it out of your own mouth. And that's difficult because you don't have a pathway developed for that. You have a different pathway developed. Typically what happens is in the beginning, you try to say that sound, but you keep saying the sound from your first language instead. That is until you develop a new pathway. And unfortunately, this is more difficult for adults to do than it is for children. There are a lot of advantages to being an adult. Have to go to work, have to pay taxes. Okay, there's not a lot of advantages, but you'll never be able to go back and be a child again, so you'll have to deal with it. And one of the best ways that you can learn a language as an adult is by practicing speaking. So make an adult decision right now. Subscribe to this channel, Click the bell so you're notified when new videos come out and so you're notified when we go live so you can join us and you can practice speaking live with us right here on this YouTube channel. If you wanna join our private speaking practice lessons, there's a link in the description under this video or you can go to our website, chrisamericos.com. Thanks for watching this video. Now go learn a language with an open mind like a child but with the responsibility of an adult. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.